and the people are like really amazing and friendly. The buildings look really cool. They're like this nice red brick arch architecture apart from the one where I live in, which looks a little bit ugly, but yeah. Um, it's really new to the computer science department, really new to the math department science. Um, yeah, it's just like really good all around. I think I chose Somerville because, um, like for me, because I was personally interested in certain um, modules of music and these professors that are teaching at Somerville were kind of like experts in the field uh, in that particular model, uh, module, sorry. So I was quite interested to learn about it, like, because I kind of want to do music ed and our professor, our um, our personal tutor in Somerville it actually specializes in music ed. So that was something that I wanted to kind of learn from her and have her sort of guide me through that. So that is one pretty big reason why I chose Somerville too. Um, yeah, I chose Somerville more because of the type of college it is. It's quite, um, it's not super small, but it's not one of the big, scary Oxford colleges either. Um, it's quite a tight-knit, like, cute community, and um, it's not too formal, but you still get all the fun, like, Oxford experiences. So I think it's a perfect, like, in-between the super crazy Oxford colleges and the very relaxed ones as well, so. <laughs> hey, what was your interview like? Um, I don't know. I absolutely found my interview just really scary, and I don't really want to think about it again. I think my best advice would be that like you just literally have no idea how your interview went. If you think it went absolutely horribly, it might have gone well. <laughs> the interviews themselves, I mean, obviously they're they're terrifying. That's expected. But um, I think because there are there are Somerville students there to kind of like help you through it, and the whole experience itself it, for me was actually quite fun. Obviously, barring the interview itself, but if you go into it with sort of like an open mind and you just say okay they're here to see how i think so that's what i'm going to show them and you just kind of say what's on your mind and even if you make a mistake you know you realize that you correct it that's also what they want to see um so i think yeah kind of go into it with an open mind and just sort of show who you are and how you think rather than try to get everything correct at all possible opportunities um, so because I'm a music student, obviously I'm doing an arts subject. So I think one of the biggest sort of takeaways from my interview was that I had to show them that I was actually truly passionate about my subject and not like I'm studying it because, you know, like, I don't know, it's cool. I mean, it is cool, but like I also had to show that I was really passionate about it, not just in the way that I wrote my personal statement, but also in the way that I was trying to answer my questions. So I think that, um, okay, so my interview had like two parts and one of them I was quite unfamiliar with because we'd never done that sort of thing in school before. So I was really nervous about it. I remember before my first interview, it was like a passage that we had and we were meant to read through it, analyze it, and then they said, you're gonna have a discussion later. It was one entire page and I feel like I didn't understand a single thing that was on there. So I was like panic mode, okay, it was so scary. But then um, I went into the interview and the tutors there asked me, oh, was there anything that you didn't understand? And I was like, um, <laughs> a lot really. <laughs> but um, they kind of helped me like walk through the passage. Like they didn't tell me the answers obviously, but they kind of helped me to facilitate my way through it so that I could actually have a sensible discussion about the passage, which I thought was an incredible way of going about an interview because I've never had an interview experience like that before. Because where I come from, it's like, if you get something wrong, they're just like, I don't know, like the entire panel is just like scribbling all your wrong answers and you're like, yikes, you know? But I think in Oxford, the interview was a lot more enjoyable in the sense that I felt like, even if I knew that something, even if I didn't know that something was wrong, but it did turn out to be incorrect. The professors kind of like walk you through it and they're just like, actually, instead of thinking about it this way, why don't you approach it from an alternative perspective? And then you kind of get to the answer on your own. So I think they're just trying to look for how teachable you are instead of like purely how knowledgeable you are, which was probably my favorite part about the interviews. Yeah. Okay, so the next question is, uh, what's been your favorite part of the course so far? Oh, the whole course has been absolutely amazing. I have like such an amazing tutor and I just enjoy all the tutorials with him. Um, I think the my most enjoyable part of like my actual course 
So computer science has been, I don't know, just doing things in a more formal way, kind of getting, uh, and like functional programming has been really fun. It's kind of very different from the type of programming that we've done before. So everything is done very rigorously and kind of you really learn to approach things from a new perspective. And I think when I look at something now compared to a year ago, I kind of look at it with a very different eye. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of been the most interesting part of my course so far. But I mean, obviously the course, at, at least I found my course is very varied. There are like lots of different things. Um, and you know, every day you can kind of be learning new things and understanding different things that you didn't understand before. And the whole time, you know, everyone's trying to help you through it and really make sure that you have like a really nice experience learning about a subject that you're really interested in. So I've enjoyed pretty much everything, but yeah, I think that's kind of my, my main takeaways from the course so far. Um, yeah, honestly, I think this is quite a hard question for me to answer. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to do psychology uh, back in school. Um, I did obviously read around my subject, otherwise I wouldn't have have applied. But um, um, everything just seems like so like interesting and fascinating to me. Um, so I don't I don't think in terms of the course I could pick out a specific thing. Um, but in terms of how it's taught, I think um, specifically at Oxford, um, I really enjoy tutorials, which are like the one on one or like two people and one um, tutor, one professor. Um, because you have such interesting discussions that go way beyond what you've st like learned in the in the lectures um, and what and in your reading as well, um, and you can really develop just the randomest ideas that you've had while you were reading something and explore that. Um, and I really think that's the thing that I've enjoyed the most. Something that I find really interesting about my course is actually that I think contrary to what most people think about a music course, it's not actually just performance or you know I don't know I've gotten a lot of so you just sing all day don't you and I'm like eh, not really um, so I think it's really like interesting to go through my course and actually find out so much of it that I so much about it that even I didn't know so in our current year um, we've done a lot of modules like that combine music with a different humanity subject for example music and politics music and history music and psychology so it's just like they kind of give you a little bit of a taster of each of them before you kind of decide which one you want to do for your exams and obviously there are the sort of more typical music um, modules as well like analysis composition conducting and everything like that but I just think that my favorite part of the course is that it's so broad you know like there are so many different fields of music that I never even knew about and just learning about them from these like professors who are legit the best of their field like on the reading lists you read their books that is crazy I still find it so mind-blowing and I just think it's such an like it's such a wonderful privilege and an opportunity to learn from these people who are just so like you know they're so good at what they do and you get the chance to learn from them and I think that's just been one of my favorite parts of the course yeah okay so the next question what was the experience of applying to oxford like how did people around you react was it competitive did you feel it was a long shot etc i don't know i think this kind of varies from person to person um so at my school quite a few other people were applying to oxford and i kind of felt like maybe i was one of the weaker applicants and you know a lot of other people had done like a lot of prep for the interview or they'd kind of done like mass challenges and gotten all these medals and things. And, you know, I, I had kind of done the mass challenge, but didn't do very well. And, you know, I was new to my sixth form. I kind of felt like maybe I was just, you know, it was a little bit of a long shot for me in a way. But at the same time, I always knew that this is kind of a course that really is interesting to me. And I think that, you know, that's what's important. And at the end of the day, um, you know, they're not, the, the the whole application process is about you. It's not about, you know, how much prep you've done or what school you go to or this or that. Um, so if you're really passionate about your subject, then you should definitely apply. And there's no reason not to apply. Um, I, I would say that, you know, there are definitely parts of the interview process, of the application process in general that are quite scary, you know. So you depending on what you do, you might have to do a like entrance test beforehand and then Obviously, you have the interviews, and then you've got a really long wait where you don't know what's going to happen. And then if you get your offer, then maybe you're really worried that you're not going to meet the grades. Certainly, I was. Um, so there's, like, 
it's kind of very much a roller coaster journey and just lots of things happening. But I mean, especially probably it's uh, even more difficult now when people can't come in person um, to like come to the open days physically and stuff. And you know, maybe your schooling experience has been a little bit disrupted by the whole coronavirus. Um, you know, it was kind of already quite a stressful, stressful thing to do. But um, at the same time, I think that like everything has been, um, you know, they really help you through it. And there are other people who are going through the same thing. And the point of the application process is not to try and intimidate you or scare you or whatever. It's really just to try and help you express like and be the best kind of applicant that you can be and show what you have to offer. And, you know, also for you to decide if this is something that's interesting to you. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, I felt a lot of pressure at first, and then I realized that that pressure was coming more from myself than from the people around me. Um, and I thought that, you know, I just had to get in. There weren't that many people from my school applying, and like a lot of them didn't get through to interviews. And then, um, and then I realized that my teachers did like, you know, they were guiding me through it and they were, they believed in me, but also if I didn't get in, like no one was gonna, nothing was gonna happen. You know, I had other options. Um, and yeah, I think especially September, October were very hectic months, finishing up personal statements and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, it was stressful, but it kind of calms down towards the end. And it just, it's all sort of worth it. And um, once you realize that like, the pressure does mostly come from within, at least in my case, kind of realize that it's not that big a deal if you don't get it. You know, it, it is obviously very upsetting because it's something that most people have wanted for a while, but yeah. Um, for me, I think my timeline was slightly different because where I'm from, our years go, like our academic years are from January to December. So because of that, the Oxford application like period was literally two weeks before my final exams. So that was quite stressful. Like I remember that the deadline for UCAS was on 15th October and my exams were on the 30th. And I was like, huh. so um, I mean, obviously in that particular period, it felt like really stressful. And I was just kind of, um, I was like fumbling with, you know, having to study, but also trying to get out a personal statement that is like of a quality that I'm happy with and just, all that sort of stuff. But I think I quite agree with what Ines said that like most of the pressure that I was feeling was really because of my own, like my own personal like um, goals that I set for myself. Um, but besides that, I think that not many people from my school actually applied to Oxford. I think um, most of them are studying locally. So they didn't really apply overseas at all. And so in that sort of way, I didn't really feel like it was incredibly competitive or anything. Um, and also, it kind of did feel like a long shot, honestly, because I was like, uh, what are the chances, you know, <laughs> as we all do. <laughs> um, but I was also kind of just feeling that if, like, you know, what's the worst that could happen? I just won't get in. I mean, that's it, right? I mean, it's not like the end of the world, like Ines said. And it's just like, you know, it's just something that if you feel like you're passionate about it, like Kai was saying, if you're passionate about what you think, what you want to study or you're passionate about your subject, I feel like Oxford is such a great place for you to kind of, you know, um, experience that and like kind of develop your passion for it and make you see a lot of things that you have never actually experienced before. So overall, I would say it was a pretty good experience, even with the bad parts. Yeah. OK, so we have another question. Uh, how much of your time is spent working versus socializing? What clubs or societies do you do? It varies a lot from person to person. Um, I do tons and tons of clubs and societies. Um, but at the same time, I don't really go to parties or drink that much because that's not really my thing. So in the first term, I did walking. Uh, no, I didn't do walking. I did caving, scuba diving. That was with the university. Uh, with the college, I do the board game society, um, knitting society. Then in the second term, I did uh, choir and walking and rocketry society. So there are just like so many things that you can just join in if you're interested in. Um, and you know, you can just try a little bit of everything. There are like so many different things that I would never have had the opportunity to try otherwise. And definitely, you know, it's very possible to balance your work with all sorts of other activities. I would say that 
you know, if you want to do like a big walk to Wales on the weekend with Walking Society, then you just kind of prioritize your work a little bit and make sure that you hand in all the problem sheets by Friday and then you have the weekend off to do your walking. Um, but, you know, the work is also um, manageable, you know, they're not going to set you an impossible amount of work to do. I think that's one of the things that I was worried about coming to Oxford is you kind of have this image that like everyone is just going to be working constantly and that if you don't put in like a thousand percent effort then you're going to fail and it's not true at all. You know, they set you a very reasonable amount of work so that you're going to be working quite a lot but you'll still have plenty of time to do all sorts of other things and you know, if you're interested in different things you can try that as well and uh, yeah, definitely I think university is just such a great experience to meet all sorts of different people and you know particularly the Oxford structure with colleges and like different societies and stuff makes it really easy to meet lots of interesting people and also to spend time doing things that you enjoy that are not necessarily related to your studies so I think that yeah definitely um, you know it's very easy to balance those things quite well. Um, yeah, so um, I definitely don't do as many societies as Kai, but um, I am part of the um, dance society, which I do um, every week. And um, yeah, I mean, it is like realistically, it is more work than other UK universities. Um, you will like notice that difference when you talk to friends from like back at school and stuff. But if you're organized and you sort of just like regularly work on whatever it is you have to hand in that week and just sort of plan in your working time then there is plenty of time for going out and socializing or joining societies or whatever it is you want to do um and yeah you just really have to be organized and then everything falls into place and you you do have enough time to balance like social and work and work life so you don't really have to worry about that much um i Okay, initially, I didn't really spend too much time socializing because I was a little um, overwhelmed with the sort of like, I don't know, I think it's just because moving in in a new country and my parents were in there and there's like work to do and everything just kind of was like, ah, overwhelming. But as obviously as the term went on, I feel like I started getting used to it a little bit more. And as Kai mentioned, the deadlines are pretty reasonable. And I feel like once you kind of get how to do the work. So for music, some of the work is actually essay based. So you have to do some readings and then write an essay about it. So once you kind of figure out how to do readings effectively and like efficiently, then you kind of start realizing that you can do a lot more. Like, um, so I'm in a band, so we have rehearsal for that like twice a week. And then I'm in the Zumba society, I'm in the badminton society and like within college and um, I just do like random things like I go for these seminars around college because I'm a little bit of a nerd and I just love like old musical seminars so I'll just like pop in for like a few of them once in a while. Yeah and it's just really like I just think that don't feel too worried about it initially if you feel like there's not a lot of time to do everything just like kind of be a bit patient with yourself and let yourself get used to this new environment where everything is legit everything is so new that you just have to give yourself a bit of time to just get with it and then eventually you'll be able to cope with it and then you'll be able to do really well so i think the next question oh, the would next be good question. for trina but... trina do you want to answer <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> so the next question is um can you bring your own instruments with you, like a guitar or a keyboard? Um, yeah, of course you can. Um, there are just some sort of like rules about how, uh, like about noise, which you have to adhere to, obviously. So please don't like shred an electric guitar at like three in the morning because then you might get deemed. So that might be a bit of an issue. <laughs> but other than that, I think it's pretty chill to bring your instruments with you. I actually brought my ukulele with me. Um, and if you're a music student, you get a keyboard to put in your room. And if you don't want to bring your instruments, you also have access to the music room which you just have to book and it's free you have to book the music room and then you can use the instruments in there if not there's also a piano in the chapel which you can use and um, also in the music faculty there are a bunch of room, music rooms where you can practice if you want to if you if you let's say you know nearer to the date you run out of space and you don't have enough baggage to bring your um, instruments you can always just go to the faculty and just get get a room and then you can have your practice sessions <laughs> Okay, question seven. 
do clubs and societies that you can join depend on your college and should you keep that in mind when applying to a college? Um, I don't know. There are a lot of like very small things that vary from college to college. So I think it's quite hard to say, oh, you know, should I use this like very small thing to decide which college you go to? And I think my advice would be, you know, if all the small things add up to something that really means a lot to you, then yeah, because, you know, if it's a little bit closer to your department and it has some clubs that you're interested in and, you know, it has some like really nice feature that you also like and it has a really nice atmosphere. If all those things kind of add up, then yeah, that's definitely you should con you, sh you should consider those type of things. But I think that it would be a little bit weird to just apply to a college because it has a club or society because, I mean, it's first of all, very easy to start a society. I started the board game society like a few weeks after I joined, basically. And, you know, now it's like was going through the lockdown. We're doing online sessions and stuff, and it's really fun. Um, so, you know, if there's something you're interested in, you can definitely start a society and the JCR are very happy about that. And they'll like give you lots of support and help you, you know, make it all official so that other people can join and stuff. Um, in terms of those specific societies at Somerville, I mean, the, the ones that I'm part of, uh, Board Game Society and Knitting Society are both kind of new this year. Um, there's Baking Society, there's like a Math Society, Physics Society, Music Society. There's um, like just all sorts of other societies. You can probably find a list of yeah, them online somewhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, uh, to be honest, I find that the, the kind of opportunities for societies at the college level are not really as good as the university level because a lot of very niche things, they're not going to be enough people in college. And also it's quite interesting to just meet people from different colleges. So, um, you know, if you're really into clubs and societies, then you should also consider the fact that like at any college in Oxford, you can join the university societies and then you can do like whatever like weird medieval sport you want to do that like only three other people in the university are interested in. That's fine. So, <laughs> Yeah, I, um, I, I would say yeah. probably don't base your decision on that. Um, yeah, I kind of I just I just wanted to clarify that because um, basically there's two there's either the um, university level societies or college level societies. And most of the bigger societies um, will be university level. So whatever college you're at, you can apply to you can join those ones. Um, and then I guess each college probably has like has their own individual societies. Um, but yeah, as Kai said, you can easily start one, like the student committee will like help you set it up and stuff. But, um, but yeah, there's both levels and you can find the university level ones um, easily online if you look it up. So you can see if the one that you're interested in, you can easily join whatever college you're at. Um, also, just like regarding choirs and things like that, if you are interested to join a choir that is not Somerville Choir, you can actually audition for other colleges' choirs. Like I have a friend who is in Balliol College Choir and another one who is in Exeter College Choir, but they're both studying in Somerville. So I don't think that um, the college really limits you in that way. You can you can really try out for those kind of things. Like you just have to show up to the audition and then you can apply. apply? Just audition. Yeah, I don't think apply. Yeah, <laughs> audition. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we have another question about what is the accommodation, accommodation like? I don't um, know. It, okay. it depends. Do I mean, obviously, we can only answer for Somerville specifically, but um, so in first year, um, there's like a couple of buildings that you can be assigned to, and it varies quite a lot depending on what building that you get. So I'm not going to say that the whole Somerville accommodation is amazing. I mean, it'll be fine. At the end of the day, you'll be with cool people, and like you'll make friends, and that's ultimately what matters, I suppose. And they're working on it. They're working on getting kitchens in every building and things like that. But um, yeah, I think it really depends which is a bit annoying, I suppose. Um, so um, I guess the building that everyone in Somerville sort of dreads um, is called Vaughn. And it's just because the rooms are a bit smaller. Um, and oh, we have five minutes left. We'll try to speed it up. Um, the rooms are a bit smaller. And the, I guess in general, the facilities aren't as nice as the average of the college. Um, but ultimately, I mean, <laughs> I can't, I don't, I don't know, I'm not in Vaughn, but um, yeah, I think ultimately it should be okay. One of the similarities across all the accommodations is that you actually, you get a personal room, like you have a room to yourself, and there's a shared kitchen 
kitchen and shared bathrooms on each floor. So for first years, I think unless you have um, a medical reason, then you you get like you have an, your own room and then you have a shared bathroom, but you don't have the ensuite option until second or third year when you have to ballot for your room. So that's only that is the only time you get to get en suites if you don't have a medical reason or a health reason that requires you to have an en suite in first year. Yeah. And lots of people get really beautiful rooms in second and third year because, you know, there's some yeah, really yeah. nice modern it buildings that, just it it that are like all nice and new and en suites and like lots of light and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. one is not that bad. It's quite social as well. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. But, yeah. Okay. So, what let's are your tutors quickly... like? Are, are they intimidating? Um, personally, not at all. Um, my tutors are all really sweet and they're really helpful. You can honestly ask them whatever questions and they won't like t tell you you're stupid or anything. Um, yeah, personally, I love my tutors. They were always really helpful and really sweet. Um, of course, that my, tutors, my tutors are actually really cool. I think that they're pretty much what you'd expect a music tutor to be. Like they're just, they seem really like, I don't know they seem really approachable and friendly which they are but they have like some really strange quirk like we have this one tutor who can just like randomly speak eight languages fluently and we're like what that is so cool but yeah i think that all of our um all of our tutors are actually really um they're really nice they're very like they're very easy to get into discussion with like with regards to the subject but also other things like um, if you want to talk to your, like, personally, my personal tutor, she's really, really sweet. And, like, if I have anything that's, like, bugging me, which is not course-related, I can still feel free to talk to her about it. So that's something I'm really thankful for. Okay, maybe yeah, I think for computer science, the, the tutors are, like, well, I, I don't know. Our main tutor here is Quentin, who will do most of your computer science tutorials, probably. And he is just absolutely amazing. He's, like, literally the most amazing tutor ever. And I just love every tutorial with him. So yeah, I cannot speak highly enough of Quentin. He is like, <laughs> his tutorials are just so fun and you like have such great conversations and um, like his just way of like oh. explaining things okay. and just maybe one generally more going about everything is good. Yeah. Okay, maybe you can try one more question. What's been the highlight of your time at Somerville so far? Um, this is going to sound very cheesy, but it's the truth. I think, honestly, um, the people and the community of the college itself, um, I really wasn't expecting it to be so tight knit. And um, everyone is just great. <laughs> um, and I've met such amazing friends there. Um, so honestly, I do think that that has to be the best part. I completely agree. It's like you get to meet all sorts of people from like all over the world and I don't know, it's just really crazy to like think that, you know, I don't know, like I'm from Singapore and then like my really close friend, she's from Washington. Like, I don't know, I just think it's like really wild. <laughs> Definitely at Somerville in particular as well. The type of people there are just like all yeah. really nice and friendly. And I think that, you know, it's definitely one of the best atmospheres of any college. And mm -hmm. I don't know, the second best thing is we had alpacas, which was really cool. Oh yeah, <laughs> and we can walk on the quads. <laughs> yeah. ah, that's always it's a, it's, a, it's like a big flex. Honestly, once you're in Oxford, it's a big flex to walk on quads. That you can walk like, on the grass. Yeah, man, and then you're just like, why is Somerville the best? Because you can walk on the grass. No, for many and other reasons too. But... At brunch. <laughs> that's fact. true. That's true. <laughs> um, okay, I think we have fifteen oh, seconds okay. left. Yeah, well, so. I think. Yeah, we've kind of run out of time now, but right. thanks everyone for joining. Um, um, thanks thanks so for your questions. Goodbye. Bye. All right. Bye, guys.